I'm Riley Bowman, host of the Concealed Carry Podcast, and you're watching Gear Report, better than tactical shit. That was perfect. <laughs> Alright guys, Jason Wilson here with Lucid Optics. I'm standing here with the Gear Report guys, and wanted to take a minute and show where we've gone to today as far as the product line goes. We started out with the HD7 red dot sight. This was our first item. Um, as a three gun competitor, I went after all the features and benefits I could to address the gap in the market. I needed multiple reticles. I wanted a larger field of view. I, need, I wanted a super durable red dot sight that didn't break the bank. When I started, there was a bunch of novelty class items on the market yeah. and a bunch of high end military grade stuff on the it's market. Not in the middle of the whole lot. Nobody was in the middle doing a good job. Yeah. That's where the HD7 came from. We put in a light sensor, so in auto mode, this item will adjust the brightness for you. Very so cool. you can go from a bright environment to a dark environment, law enforcement guys serving high risk warrants kind of thing, yeah. and it'll manage for you. And then we powered it by a common AAA. Awesome. So you can find a battery pretty much anywhere for yeah. budget cost. Gas anywhere. stations, right. anywhere you go. That's right. Very cool. So then from the red dot world, we migrated out to the M7, and then promptly pulled it off the market because we got knocked off. and. and there was some confusion in the market, but we revised the M7 this year. Brand new M7 this year. Um, light. Light. Super durable. Very compact. It'll come with uh, three different risers. Um, the medium's on it now. Um, CR2332 battery, 4 MOA dot. Just fast acquisition, small carbine work. And those risers are for AK, co-witness, and lower third. All the way up to the, the lower third co-witness for awesome. The, awesome. the ARs. And then, most anticipated in the red dot world this year, is little Mo. So it's our version of a pistol RMR type red dot sight. What we did differently is we increased the size of the actual screen you can use and scalloped out the front to a low profile. So in pistol discipline, you still index on your front plate. It yeah. doesn't change how you hold the pistol in any way, shape, or form. Awesome. Yeah, I was looking through it earlier and I noticed the size of the window. I was like, that's, mm -hmm. that's pretty impressive. It's about picking it up fast. Yeah. You've got to get on target quickly. Yeah, I'll have to practice my dot work, so I'm looking forward to getting some time <laughs> behind that guy for sure. Cool. And then in that same kind of world, the, the ARs, the, the carbine work, we have our P7, which is our answer to the ACOG. That's a four times magnified glass etched reticle combat optic. Super durable. You don't need the batteries to run it, so if they go down, you still got your reticle. Um, so it's etched into yep. it. Yep, and it comes in about a third of our closest competitor with better field of view, better optics, edge to edge clarity. Awesome. And it's got the light sensor. Yep. And so if you do use the illumination, stuff. it will run that brightness for you as well. Very cool. Okay. Another thing about the illuminated optics that we run that have the sensor on it, um, in the absence of light, they are night vision compatible. Okay. So if you're running uh, something in front or not behind, it'll work. Very cool. Okay. Then we would transition to probably one of my favorites. This is our L7. It is a 1 to 6 uh, magnified rifle scope, low power. But on 1, it's a true 1. You can run it like a red dot with both eyes open without distortion. Awesome. Um, and that makes a big difference when you're running this type of a system on For the carbine. Sure. LPBOs, they're one of my favorites. Like, I've grown to love these optics. Then we... Put in the, the fast lever. It's a this one's not on it, but it threads in. It's in the box. Comes with it. Oh, um, that's great. Man. Allows it to that. yeah, that's awesome. fast. So then the reticle inside this one, another piece of uh, thing we're kind of proud of. It has eight minute separations on six. So you can take your carbine from close quarters work all the way out. Um, I have one of my uh, business managers. She's been ringing steel at a thousand yards with a five five six. That's awesome. On top of it. Okay. Once you get past that world where we're at, um, the accessories that still kind of play in that game, we have a variable magnifier that goes on a mount in line behind any of the red dots. So you can turn a red dot into a first focal plane um, magnified optic with that. Um, we also have a screw-in magnifier for the HD7s for those of us that have that uncorrected astigmatism. Yeah. When you look through right a red here. dot and it's blurry or <laughs> yep. it's misshapen, that's not the optic, that's the operator's eye. Yeah, absolutely. And then the C3 weapons light. We wanted to make something that was purpose-built, low profile, extremely durable, and give it 300 lumens, which is dancing that edge between too much and usable yeah. in a low light situation. Because 
if you've ever had to use a light in darkness, you, you lose your night vision as well. Yeah, yeah, you definitely have to be uh, cautious what walls you shine on and uh, before you end up being blind yourself. So we put it in a, a billet type of uh, CNC construction, so it's extremely durable, and powdered off of three triple A's. Three triple A's, awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. And another okay, from the rest there. So then we would move towards what we consider more longer range optics. Um, staying in the weapons mounted idea, we'd start out with the L5 series. And so this is a 4 to 16 by 44. Um, it is a more hunting version of our 6 to 24 by 50. Basically the same optic, different magnification range. Gotcha. Um, has the L5 reticle in it. These are set in the second focal plane. Okay. Which means when you roll your magnification, that reticle does not grow and shrink. The beautiful thing about second focal plane with a accurate magnification markings as well as a metered reticle is you can adjust that reticle to the ballistic profile of your rifle. For example, my 26 Nosler mm -hmm. with the L5 reticle, I roll that thing to 20 and a half. Okay. Oh, that so makes got gradients between. That's right. Yeah. Very cool. And so then that you get for my rifle shooting a 130 grain projectile, um, it's 100 yards zero. 250, 350, 450, 550, 600 yards. And so any real ethical hunting shot, yeah, yeah. all I have to do is range it and shoot it. I don't mess with a turret again. I don't have to do anything else. Range it and shoot it. Awesome. Makes it simple. Makes it very simple. Because apparently deer and ant game don't stand still like that. Yeah, they target. don't give you much of a time. No. Something going on with that. that. They didn't get the memo on yep, that. That's right. That's right. So then a lot of guys are asking for the first focal plane mill based. Yeah. optic and that's where our MLX line comes in now while it's more expensive because it's harder to produce in a quality control setting first focal plane is gotcha. this reticle does grow and shrink with you Yeah. and everything here is metered in mills and so, the uh, turrets as yep, well mill, mill right. adjustments so when you lift up this turret and you're going to make that adjustment that's a tenth every click okay. you can hear them from here nice audible clicks press them down and lock them okay. now that's a toolless reset so once you get your rifle scope zeroed you can lift that turret all the way up and roll it to zero and index it so you can run by the numbers on the turret. So you can dial up yep. or use your reticle. The only disadvantage that has is when you get to doing it under stress and you grab onto that thing and you rip it too far up, you can slip your scales. Yeah. So we're working on changing that, but for now that's how that works. Okay. Very cool. That's a four and a half to 18, and the glass came out on that one exceptionally well. Oh yeah, looking forward to it. Good clean reticle, nothing too busy. Yeah, I noticed that. It's not overly complicated, but still has what you need. Right. So then we move to our observation side of optics. So, for example, here's the new set of eight binoculars. This is an RB series. Um, ED glass lenses. Lightweight glass bed polymer frame. We designed these more for the high altitude hunter. The guy's going to pack in, but still needs the optical clarity to go and see what he needs Absolutely. to get to. Absolutely. Yeah, you hate to not see what you're going for after hiking miles in with right. 60, 70 pounds on your back. That's right. And then every binocular we have comes with the hard pelican case. Oh, nice. And the uh, neoprene covers and the strap on it. Yeah, I like that setup. Normally you have the rubber caps yeah, flopping everywhere. Those get everywhere. lost or broken. Yeah, and... I only have my rear caps left on my mm -hmm. current binoculars because those fell off somewhere right. along the trail. Okay, and these will be all be tripod adaptable here in 2020. So you can get that full field of view when you're viewing. And they'll just thread in from the bottom. It'll thread in from the front. There's a little okay. stud right there. And then the SC9 um, is 56 millimeter, 9 to 27 um, optic there. Um, super lightweight, incredibly clear. Again, ED lenses. Um, designed more for the high altitude hunter, the guy that's going to need to see across the canyon wall and judge an animal. Yeah. Before he goes after um, that's it right. and makes that it, hike. It fits in the pant of a cargo pant. Yeah, um, most spotting scopes don't you can't, do that. You can't pack the size it that of way. a they're Nalgene bottle. Yeah. While the optical clarity is good on them, they're huge. We would put the optical clarity on this against some of those of the, of the 65 millimeter category, and this is in a 56. It's got very smooth adjustments there. That's uh, picked that up pretty quick. So that'd be great for uh, me I, I don't hunt out west but checking my zero on targets and stuff like that when i'm zeroing rifles that'd also be a great use for it as well absolutely it'd be easy to carry to the range versus those behemoths that you were mentioning so in the, the line optic wise that's really where we're at we have a host of other accessories you know sun shades and flash filters and tripods and things that support the items that we're making um, 
And something to be noticed about Lucid Optics is we do things just a shade differently. While some of this may seem familiar and similar to other things on the market, nothing here is me too. Yeah. Everything here is designed with a purpose. Everybody at Lucid shoots, which means that every time we design a product, it's not done in a vacuum. Um, we have folks that help us out from the law enforcement military side, and they tell us what they want. And if it's achievable, we well, put that in the list of have-to-have features. Gotcha. Um, outside us, uh, is, we've got, again, hunters and uh, product engineers and a bunch of folks. Everybody's you know, whispering in my ear, you got to have this feature, you got to have this feature. Well, we weigh that comment against why and how hard is it to make. I have to also balance out cost. Yeah. Um, you'll find everything in the Lucid Optics line falls within the lower to middle price point. That kind of goes back to your mission statement about <clears throat> That's draw right. the gap in the market, quality, but at a more affordable price That's range. Right. The, 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 there's no reason in the world good gear has to cost a fortune. Yeah. Um, and if you've spent two minutes in the firearms industry, you'll realize that you're going to swap out that gear. Yeah. You're going to buy a new rifle, get a new pistol. You're going to add to it. You're not going to take it from, from, a, from rifle to rifle. You're going to leave it on there, and it's going to be dedicated. Um, with the ARs being Barbies for men, Yeah. The next thing you know, you've got 10 rifles, and you need 10 optics. Absolutely. You start buying 10 optics at the mm. military grade price point, and your, college, your kid can't go to college anymore. Or well, your wife tries to hunt you down and kill that, you. That, right, you that's know. bad, too. That's also bad. That's bad, too. So any questions as we start to maybe start moving outside and get into the range and playing with these toys? Um, I see you started doing mounts, so is, uh, I guess you're kind of moving towards being able to come to you guys, buy a mount, buy the accessories, and so that it can be a total lucid optics package Correct. for your gun and provide everything, I'm assuming, at that same quality. For the first for three years when price. we brought out rifle scopes, everybody would ask, once they got the rifle scope they wanted, the next question every time was, do you have mounts? Yeah. Well, now we do. Um, I got tired of sending that business to somebody else. Yeah, good call. Now, right now, all of our mounts are Picatinny rail only. Okay. They are QD adaptable, um, so they can come on and off really fast without having to lose any of your zero. And we are not having to do the engineering for all the other actions out there. Gotcha. So most of our items live on Picatinny rails. I'd so. say it covers a huge chunk of the market there, yeah, being Picatinny, even with the bolt action setups. A lot of the newer models are coming with that Picatinny rail installed already because they know that's kind of the, the way the market's that's headed. Right. Well, um, right. I'm definitely excited to get some range time with these things. They, they look great. They feel great. They've got, you know, the, I see the smooth finish. I kind of peeked through them earlier before this video. And I was impressed with the glass quality so and the reticles. Now I want to see how they do out there on the range. Instead, one of the biggest challenges we have is getting people to look through them. Once they look through them, the, the, the product sells itself. Yeah, it's kind of hard to do through a magazine. You That's know, right. like it's they say they're great. Oh, well, let me see it. So That's right. what we're going to try and do for you guys here. So um, Get them in the hands of guys who know. Stay tuned and we'll uh, bring you guys some coverage let you know how they perform. That's good.